There are a couple of different ways to control the floor platform height and related ceiling heights in different rooms or areas in your plan. The floor platform is the area in your 3D model where the floor framing will be built. Here I have drawn two identical rectangular buildings with the exception that this one has a wall drawn down the middle of the second floor so that we have two separate defined rooms. The floor platform is determined initially by the floor defaults. You will find the default settings here under the Edit drop-down menu. I'll click here, then I'll go down to Floors and Rooms, then to Floor Ceiling Platform. Here I will open up the Floor Structure defaults. The floor structure is what determines the floor platform depth. In here, my floor platform includes the framing layer and the subfloor layer for a total of a 12 inch platform. You can override the floor defaults in each individual room. So in this floor plan, I'm going to double click in this room area and go to the structural panel. Right now it is following the defaults that we just saw in the floor defaults. But here, I'll go to the edit button and we will change this to 23.25 inches. So now my total platform depth is 24 inches. I'll click OK here and here. Notice what happens here in the back clipped cross section. The floor platform is deeper and has pushed down into the first floor area. There is another way to affect the depth of your floor platform. In this floor plan, I'll go down to the first floor level and I'll make some changes to the second floor framing. To affect the second floor framing, you'll need to be on the floor level that is below the floor framing you want to affect. Here I'm going to go to my Framing Tools Parent Tool and go down to Bearing Line. I'll place a bearing line, start here on the outside of the middle of this wall, and click and drag a line all the way to the outside of the middle of this wall. Then I'll go back to the Framing Tools and select Joist Direction Line and place a Joist Direction Line on each side of the bearing line. The Joist Direction Line does two things. It'll establish the direction the floor joists run when you use automatic framing. And it can override the floor framing defaults in a specific area and change the depth of the floor joists. If I double click on this joist direction line, I can change the depth, which is right now following the floor defaults of 11 and 7 eighths of an inch. And I'm going to change this to 24 inches. When I click OK, watch what happens. Again, the deeper floor platform has pushed down into the room below. Be aware of how the different options affect the ceiling in a camera view. On the first floor level, I will take a camera view of this room. Using an invisible wall will generate the space which covers the inside of the floor platform. The bearing line does not. No wall will be automatically generated here and we can see the inside of the platform. If I want the floor on the second level to raise up instead of pushing down, I would need to use the defined room method using a wall. You can change this wall to be invisible if you want the area to be open, but with a step down. I'll change this to an invisible wall by selecting it and clicking on the Make Wall Invisible tool here in the Edit toolbar at the bottom. Now, in this room where the floor has pushed down into the first floor level, double click on the room and you will have to do a little math here. I will add 11 and a quarter inches by clicking next to the absolute elevation floor height number and type plus 11.25. Click OK and you can see now that the floor height has raised up and the ceiling height below is level. If you want the second floor ceiling to maintain the 8 foot ceiling height in both areas, you will need to adjust this room because now the deeper floor platform has pushed up into this room so the ceiling is only about 7 feet. You can raise the ceiling height here in this defined room to match the other side. Double click in this defined room and here you can see that the ceiling is still following the absolute ceiling height indicated by the red check mark next to the default button. This is relative to the first floor floor level or what is referred to as absolute zero. However, 
it is no longer following the ceiling's relative height, which is relative to its own second floor floor height. So we will click here under relative heights on the default button to take it back to the 96 inch ceiling height. Notice now that it is not following the absolute ceiling height. In a camera view, you can now see that we have a room with an area that is stepped up on one side. To make the ceiling level in both rooms, double click here on the floor of the stepped up room area to open the room specification dialog. Click on the structural tab and then click and drag your cursor over the absolute ceiling number. Type control C to copy the number into your computer's memory. Then click cancel here. Double click on the lower room's floor to open its room specification dialog. Go to the structure tab, highlight the absolute elevation ceiling height and type control V as in Victor to paste in the number that we copied and then click OK. Now we have a room with a stepped up floor, but the ceilings are level in both areas and on both floor levels. There are a lot of creative things you can do with your design using floor platform depths and floor and ceiling heights in different areas of your plan.